Okay, let's continue our discussion of confidence intervals, uh, specifically with respect to our sample mean. Now, previously we talked about how to calculate out like our margin of error for a confidence interval if we knew what the population standard deviation is. Uh, but most of the time, like as I have written over here, like you only know that if you're some omnipotent being. Like there are very few cases where that actually is truth. Most of the time, the only thing that we have is this point estimate of our standard deviation, the best thing that, that we've got. And so the margin of error then changes. So this is if we have sigma. And what we're going to now do is like, what happens if we only have s? How do we calculate out our margin of error? And the nice thing is, is we can still do it. Uh, what, what changes though is we actually have to use a slightly different distribution. Uh, if I were to show it to you, it looks almost identical. So suppose that this is like our just regular normal distribution. We're going to use a new distribution that's called the t distribution. And there's not much different to the t distribution at all. The only thing that it is is really it's a little bit wider and a little bit flatter. That's kind of an over-exaggeration of what it is. But that's what the t distribution is. And it accounts for how much wider it is kind of based upon our sample size and the standard deviation. Um, anyhow, besides that, it's pretty much the same. Uh, and it accounts for that by what we call uh, degrees of freedom. So like, I want to retract the statement on the standard deviation. But really, it adjusts the size of that distribution based upon, um, based upon the sample size. OK. so. Let's now get our actual equation of our margin of error if we only know our sample standard deviation. So instead, we're going to use, like I said before, it's called the t distribution. Uh, it's in our software, so we get it just kind of selected again. And we need to know a new piece of information. So we have what we call the degrees of freedom, and we still need alpha divided by 2. Now, on both of these, these are subscripts. We're not like multiplying z by alpha and dividing it then by 2. These are what are called arguments. And we need them to put into our software functions so that our software knows what to calculate. But we're not using these to like do some multiplication or division in this. It's, we're using these subscripts in order to figure out what this t value is or to figure out what that z value is. OK, and then what we do is we just multiply by s divided by the square root of n. And what we call this as well is we're still just going to call this guy kind of that generic term of the standard error. Uh, so we've got a new way to calculate out our margin of error. But besides that, the equation is it's the same. It's still our point estimate, plus or minus the margin of error. And we just have to pick which margin of error, which method are we going to use based upon which standard deviation do we have. Do we have the population standard deviation or do we have the sample standard deviation? Okay, so now that we've got this, or these, this new equation, uh, we can go ahead and do our calculation. So let's start off with calculating our new standard error. So let's just go ahead and put that up the standard error, and that's going to be equal to 20 feet divided by the square root of 37. And if we do that, our standard error that we get is now 3.29. OK, let's figure out our t value now. So when we do this guy, let me kind of write these out with values put in. So it's going to be t. I need to know degrees of freedom. Sorry, I haven't put that down yet. The degrees of freedom is actually really easy to do. Let me just erase this real quick. The degrees of freedom, for this case, it's slightly different how we calculate it later down the road. But our degrees of freedom is just going to be n minus 1, or our sample size minus 1. So pretty simple right now. It'll get more complicated later, but we'll talk about it when the time arrives. So here we go. We need to know 
t at 36 degrees of freedom, or 37 minus 1, comma, alpha divided by 2, we did that already, that's at 0 0.025. And we're going to multiply this by our standard error of s, which was that 20 divided by the square root of 37. That's how we calculate out our new kind of margin of error. Okay, so let's get our t down. So we do t, which is 36 degrees of freedom, comma, 0 0.025. And that is going to equal, so once again, we're going to use the quantiles, but instead of using the normal distribution, we're going to be using the t distribution. And for that, we get for our t is going to be 2.03. Now, if you remember, when we did this with our population standard deviation, our z-score was 1.96. So it's close. And it should be pretty close. The Z and the T are actually pretty close, except when your uh, sample size gets actually pretty small. If it gets smaller, uh, the, the deviation from the Z distribution is more pronounced. Uh, and that, that's where it's really useful is when we have a small sample size. All right, so we've got our T now. Great. So now what we can do is we can do our T multiplied by our standard error, which gives us our margin of error. And so we can just say that our margin of error here is going to equal to 6.67. OK, so now we've got our margin of error. And all we've got to do now is actually write out our confidence interval. And so we can say now that mu is contained within. And we can put up like 393.3, comma, 400 and 6.7. So just a little bit of rounding there. That's where our mean is actually where we think that the true mean is located. Once again, it missed it, but that's OK. Remember, occasionally our confidence intervals do miss. Maybe if we were to take another sample of 37, um, well, if we kept using this method at our 95% confidence level, 95% of the time we should be capturing the true population mean and only missing it about 5% of the time. Okay, so let's write a confidence interval statement. And guess what? The confidence interval statement is it's essentially identical uh, to what we did when we knew what the population standard deviation was. But let's take some practice and go ahead and write it out. So what we, what we can say is again that we are 95% confident that the true mean height of, uh, what did I call this, super tallest, is somewhere between 393 three feet and 406 feet. And there is our confidence interval statement. And that's how we handle it when we do not know what our true population standard deviation is. There's really like only one change. And the change is that instead of using this z distribution, we use the t distribution. And in reality, this is what we're going to use most of the time because most of the time, we don't know what the population standard deviation actually is. So we can also talk about, so what we've done right now is we've done what are called these two-tail confidence intervals. Right, where we start at our point estimate and we go up and down a certain value. But what if we threw all of that error to one side? We can totally do that. That's just called a one-tailed uh, confidence interval. And we can do that with both methods if we know what the population standard deviation is 
or if we only know what the sample standard deviation.